we are uh, often in the situation where we want to optimize uh, a function subject to some uh, constraints. In such case, we can use the Lagrangian multiplier method. This is a method to find the stationary values, either a minimum or a maximum, of a function subject to equality constraints. I stress equality because if the constraints are uh, of different type, like, uh, like this, we, the problem becomes a little bit harder and we need to use other tools. But in case of equality constraints, we can use this method and uh, we'll use it considerably across our lessons because many problems that we will see are actually problems of constrained optimization. For example, welfare maximization we just saw in the previous slide. What is interesting of this method is that we are not making assumptions about linearity, either for the functions nor for the constraints. So uh, this is a pretty generic method that can be applied to uh, unlinear functions as well. And the way it works is that it employs some dummy variables that we name the Lagrange multipliers and for each constraints that we have in uh, our problem, we have the Lagrange uh, multipliers, we add further uh, variable. And uh, what is interesting is that in economics, we can give an interpretation to these uh, Lagrange multipliers as a shadow of price. That is how much really the constraint is binding uh, uh, for the function, how much uh, if we relax a little bit the constraints, our functions will uh, go toward uh, our stationary values. So how much the functions increase when we relax the constraints associated to the dummy variable we are investigating. So this is pretty interesting for, for us as economists uh, because of this uh, interpretation that we can give to, the, uh, to these dummy variables. So in general, we will have two worker functions, okay? The functions will be a function of a set of uh, uh, variables that we call decision variables, x1, x2, xn. And we want to, for example, maximize these functions. But this function also we know in our model that is subject to some constraints. So this is another functions. So over the same set of decision variables, and we, ha we have to uh, keep our original function such that this function g1 is equal to this constraints c1. And then we may have more constraints, so we can have a, a second constraints, or we can have a, a m constraint. All the constraints works in the same way, so they are all the functions of the same set of uh, what we call decision variables, and w we, the constraints act as the function of the of these decision variables must be equal to some value that I is constant for each constraint. So C1, C2, Cm are constant. Well, given this uh, structure of our problem, what we can do, we can write a new function that we call Lagrangian. And this function is made of the original function that we have, plus for each constraint, a new dummy variable that is the Lagrange multipliers that multiply the constraints in terms of the constants minus the functional form of the constraints. And this is valid for the first constraint, for the second constraints, and for any other constraints that we may have in our model. What the Lagrange multiplier method tells us is that finding the stationary value 
of these uh, new uh, Lagrangian functions that we wrote and we stress that this new function is unconstrained so we can use it the normal methods we know to uh, find the uh, optimal of the functions and uh, finding the stationary values of these new functions is equal to finding the stationary values of the original functions under the constraints that we set. So, for example, for two variables and one constraint, we will have one generic objective function that depend of x and y, and we will have a single constraint. At that point, we can write our uh, Lagrangian functions as our original functions plus the Lagrangian multipliers that multiply the constraint. At this point, to find the solutions, to find the stationary value of our original uh, constrained functions, what we do is we simply take the first order, first order conditions, but over this three variable, our original two variables plus our new variables that we added. So we'll set the first derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to lambda. And here is nothing else than our constraints. This guarantee us that the constraint is respected. This is the condition that guarantees us that uh, maximizing this function, the Lagrangian, is equal to maximizing our original functions plus respect the constraints. And then what the other two first order conditions are in respect to uh, our original uh, variables. This is a y, eh? it's not, uh, I don't know why, but this is a y. So some notes about this method. Here you can see a three dimensional view of the, of a function. So this is a function of two variable x and y and uh, you can see that in general a constrained maximum will always be equal or most often below a free maximum so this is a functions this functions unconstrained as a maximum okay that is in this blue point what we do is however we wrote a constraints that link y and x. So what we can do is that we have to follow the function over this constraint. So the only points that, uh, that follow our constraints are these ones in the red, in the red curve. Okay? So it's only within these points that we can now choose which is the highest, uh, the maximum uh, uh, level between all these points. And in this case, is this red point. So in general, uh, I repeat, uh, it may happen that the constrained maximum will be exactly like the unconstrained one, but most often will be some uh, lower level for a maximization problem, of course. Another an important aspect to do is that here our functions of two variables we are adding one constraints. If we had another constraints, for example, this one here, okay, I'm not very good in drawing, but well, if we had also this one, we are restricting somehow to only this point to be a valid point and uh, our uh, uh, problem would degenerate because we would not have any more choice uh, between points. So it will, we would end up with a degenerated uh, problem. And 
so in order for the problem to be meaningful, the number of nature of the constraints should be such to restrict, but not to limit the possibility of choice. And because we are speaking about equality constraints, the number of uh, uh, equality constraints should be less than the number of choices variables. Otherwise, again, we have uh, a degenerated problem. Another important thing is that both here and here I draw some uh, linear constraints because this is somehow simple to draw, but as the functions, also the constraints doesn't need to be uh, linear in nature. So let's gonna try a numerical example. Here we have to find the extremum of uh, this function z equal x, y subject to the constraint that x plus y must be equal to 6. Okay, so how do we proceed? The first thing is to write the Lagrangian. So we write the Lagrangian as <coughs> our original functions plus our uh, new dummy variable, in this case only one, because we have only one constraint, that multiply what is here C minus G X and Y where G of X and Y is X plus Y. So now we have nothing else than find the first order conditions of the Lagrangian for X, Y and the Lambda. <coughs> so for Lambda we are back to our constraint and this gives us the first equations. The first order condition of the Lagrangian for x is y uh, minus lambda. And for uh, the first order condition of uh, the Lagrangian for um, y, it is x minus lambda. Now we have a system of equations, uh, three equations in a, a free unknown that we can solve uh, very uh, quickly, for example, by substitution. So y is equal to lambda and x equal to lambda as well. So they are the same. So we end up with 6 minus 2x equal to, to 0. So x is equal to 3 and also y and lambda is equal to 3. So here in this situation, they are all the same, but of course, they don't need to be like that. And so we, this value with the star means the optimal value, the value of x of the optimum is free, the value of y of the optimum is free, and, and the value of lambda of the optimum is free, and this is our original functions are the optimum. So Let's gonna take another example, uh, a little bit uh, more complicated, but the nature of the problem is exactly the same. So here we have to find uh, the extremum of this function zeta. I don't know why LibreOffice wrote like this. This is a zeta, zeta equal 2x plus 4y plus y double uh, w. And here we have two constraints, this one and this other one. Okay, well, we follow exactly the same the same pathway. So we wrote our we write our uh, Lagrangian functions as our original functions plus our first uh, constraints that multiply our first uh, Lagrangian multiplier plus our second constraints that multiply our second Lagrangian multiplier and. All we have to do now is find the first order uh, conditions for x, y, w, and the two Lagrangian multipliers. So in total, we have a, a set of six variables, but also six first order conditions. Well. If you want, you can solve this uh, linear uh, system by hand. It's a system of five uh, uh, equations, I said, say, I cannot count, okay. Five uh, uh, equations in five and no, and find uh, the stationary values 
of uh, uh, zeta. Here, instead of doing by hand, just show you how you can do it using a programming language. This is um, in a Julia language using a symbolic library. I don't know if you never use it, but there are some very nice uh, tools that allow you to compute or make some calculus, not only numerically, but as in this case, symbolically. So what we do here, we def first define, uh, well, we load the, the library, we define which are the, the variable of uh, interest, where L1 and L2 are our uh, two Lagrange multipliers. We write our uh, Lagrangian functions. We take the differentiate of the Lagrangian function for x, for x, and here we get the results for y, for uh, w, for uh, the two Lagrangian multipliers, and then we just solve this linear system. We've made of these five equations and we want to solve for these five variables. And uh, the software find for ourselves the numerical results. And uh, when we tell them su to substitute the numerical results in the functions, give us also the result of the functions. You, you can uh, go on these links and you can uh, either view or execute this code. Of course, what we did up to now was just to look at the first order conditions, but then to establish uh, that a stationary point is uh, indeed a maximum and not a minimum or a set point, we should also investigate the second order sufficient conditions. And the way we can do that for a problem of uh, constrained optimization is that instead of looking at the normal Hessian, the Hessian is the matrix of the second uh, derivative for all the variables, we are going to build what is called a bordered Hessian and uh, is represented with this tilde on top of, uh, of the H. And uh, this bordered Hessian is augmented by the first derivative of uh, the constraints that are set in this way. So here is what would be our normal Hessian, the matrix of the second derivative, and we add in this way the constraints. So in the case of two variables and uh, one constraint, it came out that uh, stationary points that we found using the first order conditions is a maximum if uh, the uh, determinant of the Hessian is positive and a minimum if it is uh, negative. If we take back the example that uh, uh, we saw, the first example, so this was zeta equal xy, and uh, the constraints was x plus y equal to six. So this one is the first derivative of the constraints for x, and this is for y, and we repeat them here. And uh, this one is the second uh, derivative of x of uh, our function to, to maximize and uh, is equal to, to zero. This is the cross uh, derivative. So when we compute the determinant here, it came out that determinant is equal to two. And so the stationary point what we found before on three x equal to three and y equal to three, it is indeed a maximum. Things become a little bit more complicate when uh, there are more than uh, two variables or more than one constraints because to determine uh, uh, the nature of the stationary point we need to study the sign of uh, the border at the leading principal minor so this sequence of determinants and uh, the methods is well described in the book of Chan 2005 fundamental methods of uh, mathematical economics well what we do on, uh, in economics and in natural resource economics is that sometimes 
we set ourselves uh, in a way that we do not actually need to look at the second order conditions because we make assumptions in a way that the functional forms of our applications are such that uh, we do not need to check for uh, the second order conditions.